redesignation ceremony honoring General Richard E. Cavazos. General Cavazos, a native Texan, was commissioned into the Army through the Reserve Officer Training Corps program at Texas Technological University, now known as Texas Tech, in 1951 for bravery and demonstrated leadership in combat. He was awarded the Distinguished Service Cross on two separate occasions, once during the Korean War and once during the Vietnam War. Later, General Cavazzo served as 3rd Armored Corps Commanding General at this installation in the rank of Lieutenant General. In 1982, he became the first Hispanic American to pin on four stars as Commanding General of the U.S. Army Forces Command fittingly summarizing his career of service by placing him at the head of training, sustaining, and deploying all of the Army's deployable forces. After 33 years of active duty service, he retired in 1984. Even during his retirement years, General Cavazos continued to serve his Army as he mentored many military officers that followed him, many of whom are here today. Please rise for the invocation given by the 3rd Armor Corps Chaplain, Colonel Douglas Ball. I invite you to join me in prayer. Almighty God, Lord of hosts, I invite both your presence and your blessing at this redesignation ceremony here today. Throughout scripture, you rename people to signify new purposes, new callings, new hopes, and new qualities. For you are the God of new beginnings whose mercies are new every morning. As we redesignate our installation today in honor of General Richard Cavazos, let us be inspired to new heights by his legacy. Thank you for this opportunity to highlight the service of all our soldiers as we take on the name of a former Third Armored Corps commander. Thank you for this opportunity to further partner with the great communities which surround us as we take up the reputation of a Texas native. Thank you for this opportunity to recognize the contributions of our families as the Cavazos family honors us with their presence today. May we all strive to reflect the courage, faithfulness, character, and leadership symbolized by this redesignation as we step together into the future as Fort Cavazos. In your name I pray, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, the distinguished guests in attendance today include the Honorable Gabe Camarillo, Under Secretary of the Honor Army, the Honorable Carrie Ricci, Office of the General Counsel. The Honorable Lawrence Romo, Fort Hood Renaming Commission. Admiral Retired Michelle Howard, Fort Hood Renaming Commission. Mr. Jerry Buchanan, Fort Hood Renaming Commission. General James Rainey, Commanding General Army Futures Command. Command Sergeant Major Brian Hester, Command Sergeant Major, Army Futures Command. General Retired and Mrs. J.D. Thurman. General Retired Vincent Brooks. Distinguished members of General Cavazos' family include General Retired Cavazos' brother, Mr. Joseph Cavazos and his family, as well as General Retired Cavazos' children, Mr. Tommy Cavazos and his family, Mrs. Laura Cavazos Blevins and her family, Dr. Rebecca Cavazos and her family. Dr. Catherine Rachel Cavazos and her family. Additionally, we would like to extend a welcome to all the Cavazos family members who are in attendance today. Finally, we would like to thank the many distinguished guests, local mayors, civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, general officers, service members, Department of the Army civilians, good neighbors, and friends of Fort Hood for attending today's historic ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please rise for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for honors to the host and honor to the nation. Today's official party consists of the Honorable Gabe Camarillo, Under Secretary of the Army, and Lieutenant General Sean C. Bernabe, Commanding General, 3rd Armored Corps. The Honorable Gabe Camarillo is deferring honors to the Cavazos family.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm round of applause for the 3rd Armored Corps Commander, Lieutenant General Sean C. Bernardi. Good morning. What in a short day. So anyway, it's great to see everybody. My name is Sean Bernardi. I'm proud to call myself an American soldier and a Phantom Warrior. Before we get started, I want to take a few minutes to thank our salute battery out there on the field, our color guard, the entire protocol team, all the soldiers that have been working behind the scenes to set all this up today, our entire garrison team, to include all those great DPW civilians who've been out there changing hundreds of signs over the last couple of weeks to make sure we're ready for this historic event. I tell you what, uh, it's been a long time coming, but I'm so glad it's here today. How about a round of applause for this great team of teams that made this happen today? I also want to extend a special welcome to all our distinguished guests. Now, our narrator highlighted several of them by name, and I won't repeat those names, but we are blessed to have with us our Under Secretary of the Army, a couple of civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, at least one member of the Naming Commission. I think we have about a platoon of flag officers here, both active and retired. It's great to see you all here. I think we have a platoon plus of Command Sergeants Major, again, active and retired. Thank you for being here today. We have several federal, state, and local government officials, including several of our local mayors. Always great to see you here. Many of our local council members, superintendents, principals, our good neighbors. I tell you, for all these distinguished guests, your presence here today communicates to us very clearly your support for the soldiers, for the Army civilians, and for all the soldiers that are part of this great installation, thank you for being here today. Now, as impressive as, impressive as you all are, the real guests of honor today are the 60-plus members of the Cavazos family. We had a chance to meet several of them last night. So yes, all four of General Cavazos' children, uh, Dr. Catherine Rachel Cavazos, Dr. Rebecca Cavazos, Ms. Laura Blevins, and Mr. Tommy Cavazos are here. Also present is uh, General Cavazos' brother, Mr. Joseph Cavazos. Had a chance to meet him this morning. Sir, welcome. I think I counted eight grandchildren. I may not have that quite right, but I think I counted eight who are also with us today. We also have several nieces and nephews, grandnieces and grandnephews, first cousins and second cousins. And talking to the grandkids last night, they admitted that it, in some cases they've never actually met these nieces, nephews, or grandnieces and nephews. So I think this is a big reunion for the Cavazos family as well. But to the entire Cavazos family, we are so glad you've been able to join us today as we celebrate the life and the service of your brother, your father, your grandfather, your uncle, your cousin, General Richard E. Cavazos. Let me ask all the members of the Cavazos family to please stand if you can, if you are able. Yes, let's welcome the Cavazos family. Thank you for being here. Now at the end here, we're going to get a chance to bring some of them up here. They're going to help us do the countdown as we unveil the sign, but a few minutes from now. Okay. Now we do have some folks here that may not have spent a lot of time on our installation and may not be all that familiar with it, so let me tell you a little bit about it. We call our installation the Great Place in recognition of its size and its importance to our Army. During World War II, the Army announced the need for sufficient land and facilities for soldiers to practice large-scale mock battles, to train multiple divisions simultaneously, and to employ the latest technologies to include tanks and new anti-tank gun systems. Our Army needed a place to teach and train American soldiers on tank destroyer maneuvers and tactics to counter the German armor threat which we had just witnessed on the European continent. On September 18, 1942, Camp Hood was established right here in Colleen, Texas to meet all those needs of an Army preparing for war. Eight years later, on April 15, 1950, the Army announced this location as a permanent installation. 
Today, this post has grown to become one of the largest military installations in the world, consisting of over 218,000 acres. It is one of the few installations capable of housing and training two armored divisions simultaneously. Today, the Great Place supports a population of 58,000 soldiers, family members, Department of the Army civilians, and contractors. For over eight decades, this piece of ground has been critical to Army readiness. It is a power projection platform, a launching pad for lethal formations, lethal armored formations, as they deploy on short notice anywhere in the world to do our nation's bidding. For over eight decades, this installation has enjoyed the love and support of the Central Texas community, a community that is quick to welcome newcomers, quick to offer a helping hand, and quick to volunteer its services. For over eight decades, the Great Place has been the installation of choice nestled very tightly within a community of choice. Now, given the importance of this installation for our Army and for our nation, I can think of no better namesake than General Richard Cavazos. Now, I did not know General Cavazos, but I wish I had. General Cavazos was known around the Army as a battle-proven warrior, as a soldier's soldier, as a master trainer, as a military innovator, as a mentor, and as a humble servant leader. General Cavazos was a fearless warrior and a military legend who demonstrated exceptional leadership and valor during both the Korean conflict and the Vietnam conflict. He was a highly decorated soldier who earned the Distinguished Service Cross twice, the Silver Star and the Purple Heart. General Cavazos was described by many as a soldier's soldier who earned admiration, loyalty, and respect through his warrior ethos, through his selflessness, through his genuine empathy, and through his unquestionable love for soldiers. Over the last several weeks, I have read and reread the citation for each distinguished service cross earned by General Cavazos. Let me read to you an excerpt from his first distinguished service cross. The distinguished service cross is presented to Richard E. Cavazos, first lieutenant, infantry, U.S. Army, for extraordinary heroism in connection with military operations against an armed enemy of the United Nations while as company commander of Company E, 2nd Battalion, 65th Infantry Regiment, 3rd Infantry Division. First Lieutenant Cavazos distinguished himself by extraordinary heroism in action against enemy aggressor forces in the vicinity of Saginaw, Korea on the night of 14 June 1953. On that date, Lieutenant Cavazos led his men in a raid on the entrenched enemy upon whom heavy casualties were inflicted. When a heavy barrage was laid on the position by the enemy, Lieutenant Cavazos withdrew the company and regrouped his men. Lieutenant Cavazos three times led the company through the heavy barrage and assaults on the enemy position, each time destroying vital enemy equipment and personnel. When the United Nations element was ordered to withdraw, Lieutenant Cavazos remained alone on the enemy outpost to search for missing men. Exposed to heavy hostile fire, Lieutenant Cavazos located five men who had been wounded in the action. He evacuated them one at a time to a point on the reverse slope of the hill from which they could be removed to the safety of the friendly lines. Lieutenant Cavazos then made two more trips between the United Nations position and the enemy held hill, searching for casualties and evacuating scattered groups of men who had become confused. Not until he was assured that the hill was cleared did he allow treatment of his own wounds sustained during the action. Gen General Cavazos earned a second Distinguished Service Cross, this time as a battalion commander in Vietnam. And I won't read the citation to you. If you haven't read it, I commend it to you. I won't read it today because I think we might hear a little bit about that experience from one of our guest speakers who was there with him in Vietnam when he once again 
demonstrated extreme courage and leadership under fire. Suffice to say, General Cavazos was a proven combat leader who repeatedly demonstrated courage, selfless service, and an irrepressible warrior spirit. For the remainder of his career, General Cavazos earned a reputation as a master trainer and as a gifted developer of leaders. He, of course, was my predecessor as the commander of the Third Armored Corps. And it was a couple of weeks ago I had a chance to read some training guidance that General Cavazos published as the Three Corps commander. He published it on the 20th of March, 1980. In fact, that training guidance is sitting on my desk upstairs. His guidance was simple, it was clear, it was precise. His guidance focused the leaders of the Corps on caring for soldiers, on developing leaders, on building aggressive, highly coordinated winning teams, on ensuring that every soldier masters the fundamentals of warfighting, on tough, realistic, collective training to form a proficient and lethal team of teams. In the opening paragraph of his guidance, he reminded the Corps that, quote, the next war will be a come-as-you-are affair and that therefore readiness is paramount. These tenets are timeless and they provide a great roadmap for the Third Armor Corps today. General Cavasso served on active duty for 33 years. Upon retirement, he continued to serve as a mentor to Army commanders and to general officers. He is credited as one of the creators of the Battle Command Training Program, designed to develop and to train divisions and corps for large-scale combat operations. Many of the retired general officers present today reminisce about the first-class coaching, about the artful teaching, and about the caring mentorship they received personally from General Cavazos. Now, as we prepared for today's ceremony, we had dozens of retired Army leaders who asked to speak during the ceremony. They wanted to share their stories about all the positive influence that General Cavazos was for them and their lives. Now, if we let them all speak, we would probably been out here for four hours. And so we chose a different option. And so we had a chance to film many of those leaders talking about General Cavazos. You'll get to see some of those clips during the reception today after the ceremony, and we'll release some of those by social media in the days and weeks ahead. Today we will, though, get a chance to hear from two distinguished and highly decorated soldiers. First, from Lieutenant Colonel Retired Jim Tucker, who served with General Cavazos in, in 118 Infantry Vanguards in Vietnam. And then second, we'll get to hear from Lieutenant General Retired Randy House, who served as aide-de-camp to General Cavazos when he was here as the Corps Commander for Third Corps. As you listen to their words, as you hear their testimonials about General Cavazos, I know you will agree. There is no better namesake for our installation than Richard E. Cavazos. Let his name and all that it represents inspire us all every single day to live up to his legacy as a warrior, as a soldier's soldier, as a master trainer, as a military innovator, as a coach and mentor, and as a humble servant leader. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for coming today and joining us on this very historic occasion. Phantom Warriors, be all you can be. Our next speaker, Lieutenant Colonel Retired James M. Tucker, graduated from the Army Reserve Officer Training Corps program at the Citadel and was commissioned as a second lieutenant of infantry in 1956. Amongst his four overseas assignments was a tour in Vietnam in 1967, where he was assigned as the executive officer and later S3 of the 1st Battalion, 18th Infantry Regiment, 1st Infantry Division, under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Richard Cavazos. Lieutenant Colonel Tucker retired in 1979, having served on active duty for over 22 years. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm round of applause for Lieutenant Colonel retired James Tucker. Uh, 
I've got a word of advice for you. Never trust a guy that comes to the podium without a piece of paper in his hand. Okay. So you know what you're subjected to. General, did you fulfill my request? Would you have that? Go ahead and solicit that person, please. And yet, I know one other thing. I, I don't know how to ask this, because, but I'm the only guy that you will ever meet that in an official ceremony for Charles de Gaulle, the president of France, was required after 30 minutes notice to give an eyes left. Think about that. FM 22-5 does not have an eyes left in it. Am I correct? Anybody disagree? Well, it didn't in my time. I went to, I went immediately to the officer's mess after that, and they served me a French meal, and de Gaulle appeared on the TV. And I asked my interpreter, what is he saying? And he said, he is saying that all NATO troops are being withdrawn from Germany. No, from France. I have always felt that it was my fault because can you imagine soldiers trained to do eyes right and I give them eyes left. So be patient with me. The one message that I, and all the people that, have, that I could think of that have been thanked, and I'm just now led being able to see way over there, and what a crowd. I hope I don't disappoint you because I only have two significant messages for you. First of all, that Dick Cavazos loved his soldiers. <laughs> I cry a lot. Just <laughs> kind of forgive me. <laughs> but when I hear when I hear the cannons fire, tears came to my eyes because there was Something else that Dick Cavazos loved, and it was his artillery. And we were infantrymen. <laughs> I watched, and as I tell you, I don't, I don't have a script. That's your problem. You have to live with me. I got a, one night we had started early in the evening with an attack on our India, our night defensive position, and it had gone all night, and the artillery fire was not on target and not uh, con continuing. The next morning, Colonel Cavazos had me call the commanding general's aide and, and have the commanding general and his aide come to the heliport. I did, and along with that, he brought the artillery battalion commander Cavasso got off. I, none of you ever knew him and loved him like I do. <laughs> well, I talk. <laughs> when I mention his name, I cry. I'm sorry. It's just the way it is. I'm just. Not, by the way, have I got anybody in the audience that's 90 years old? <laughs> that person I could communicate with. <laughs> Are you there somewhere hidden? Please get your aide to assist you in standing because I want to see somebody that's as old as I am. <laughs> Hell, I don't see anybody. <laughs> now, one other thing I got to ask you, General, is there not some position that would allow these kids to be at, at, at what I'd call arm's rest? In other words, who can do that? Who has got the authority to let them lower the flags let them come to parade rest. Is there anybody that has that authority? What about it? <laughs> can you can you lower the flag? Can you come to parade rest with the flag? I don't know. I've been out of the army too damn long, but I, but I, I, I learned one thing in my 90 years. If you don't ask for it, you don't get it. 
set. Is there any way? So, well, bless their hearts. Somebody ought to relieve them in a little bit. <laughs> well, Dick Cavazos loved one thing more than his artillery, and that was he loved his soldiers. And I have asked the commanding general, because I didn't, I didn't want to overstep the bounds of command, to find me the lowest ranking soldier that he has authority over. Did you find him, General? It ain't you, is it? Well, come here, boy. PFC. PVC. What? PVC, sir. PV. PV2. PV. A PV2, guys. Well, let me tell you about Cabasas, what he would do. When he'd go to a unit, he would ask to see the, the junior members of that organization. And he would always spend time with the lowest ranking soldier he could find. And I'm and General, you did, I, damn, you did a good job. I'd promote you if I had the authority uh, to get me this boy up here so that I could hug him. And I haven't hugged a grunt in 50, in 40 years, okay? All of you know what a grunt is. That's, that's just a dumb old infantryman. That's what I am. But the smartest dumb grunt I've ever known was Dick Cavazos. Nobody was as smart as Dick Cavazos. And... And I have seen generals actually, two and three stars, bow to him, both just agree that he had the right solution to the right problem. And it always came back to one thing. And General Bernardi, this is what I, I, I want Fort Cavazos to be, is a place where all of the soldiers have the best of care that they can have. And I don't know what, how I could end it any better than I would love to have. I, I love that artillery sound. You don't know. I haven't heard that in 50 years. And I love the artillery because if it's one thing that keeps soldiers like him alive, it's the artillery. So just know that. And God bless you all for enduring me for, I hope I didn't go more than five minutes. But... Uh, <laughs> Our next speaker, Lieutenant General Retired Randolph W. House, a distinguished military graduate from Texas A&M University, commissioned as an infantry officer in 1967. Lieutenant General House commanded in peace and war at every level of command from an infantry platoon leader in the 82nd Airborne Division to Deputy Commander-in-Chief of the U.S. Pacific Command. Lieutenant General House retired in 2000 after 33 years of service. For 10 years after 9-11, he was a senior mentor to the Department of Defense Senior Military Commands for classified exercises and operations worldwide. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm round of applause for Lieutenant General Retired House. Thank you for that introduction. But if I'd have known you were going to eulogize me, I'd have had a decency to die. <laughs> General Cavazos once told me, if you're lucky, you may meet one great man in a lifetime. There are many people here today, me included, who were very fortunate because we met General Cavazos as a humble soldier, and a truly great man by any standard. I served as General Cavazos' aide-de-camp when he was a CG of 3 Corps in Fort Hood. 
After he retired in 1984, it was my honor and privilege to be his unofficial aide for another 33 years. Five and a half years ago, Mrs. Cavazos called me up and said, I've got a letter from the boss that he wrote right before he died. And he says, tell House he has to give my eulogy. Those were the hardest remarks I ever made. I decided after his funeral to service to retire from public speaking, and I have until today. However, when three core leadership asked me to give remarks at this ceremony, how could I say no? General Cavazos was a Quinos, translated King's Men. He was born and raised on the King Ranch, where at a very young age, he began to learn how to lead, teach, coach, mentor, and motivate others. During my lifetime, he was the Army's most gifted order. He was able to inspire and motivate like no other. He could make you laugh and cry in the same sentence. In minutes, his audiences would be sitting at the edge of their chairs, hanging on his every word. General Cavazos had a delightful sense of humor and clever sayings flowed from his lips like a babbling brook. When he heard something dumb, he would say that is about as likely as a chicken voting for Colonel Sanders. <laughs> when he saw poor leadership, he would say, that guy could not lead a group in silent prayer. I was asked to talk about General C's enduring contribution to America's Army. As the Corps Commander said, and what that means to me is talking about training, which was his hallmark. General C told me it was during his wartime experiences that he began a lifelong quest to focus on training, leadership, and taking care of soldiers. But when he talked about taking care of soldiers, he did not mean coddling them. He meant training them to standard. He believed in tough love. He opposed wasting soldiers' training opportunities with fringe activities. He would often say poor training resulted in missions not being accomplished and soldiers dying that shouldn't have died. When he retired from Force Com in 1984 as a very young four-star, only 55 years old, the Army's leadership asked him to develop a program to train division and corps commanders and their staffs. The result was in 1987, the establishment of the world-class training experience called the Battle Command Training Program, or BCTP, as it became known. At the time, the Army had solid training programs for individual soldier training through brigade-level training. The advent of the National Training Center at Fort Irvin revolutionized what intense field training looked like. But there was no equivalent training program for higher echelons. For some reason, they just thought when you got to be a division and corps commander, you knew it all. And as the 47th commanding general of the Big Red One, I guarantee you that wasn't the case. Desert Storm proved to the world what intense high-level training could do. It was said that every Army brigade commander and above that served in Desert Shield and Desert Storm to include General Schwarzkopf had experienced at least one BCTP led by General Cavazos and his hand-picked senior mentors referred to as Graybeards. The Battle Command training program enormously influenced America's Army 
war fighting capability. And his emphasis on realistic training is as relevant today as it was in the 1980s and the 1990s. Even now as evidenced by the $40 million Cavazos Simulation Center here at Fort Cavazos. When a division or corps trained under the BCTP program, echelons of command down to battalion level were included and General Cavazos and his senior mentors spent hours, countless hours, at all times of the day and night, mentoring not only flag officers, but majors, lieutenant colonels, and colonels. Just ask J.D. Thurman what General Co C's coach had meant to him when he was a lieutenant colonel. General Cavazos' vision for the BCTP consisted of three major elements. Phase one was an intense leader training program at Fort Leavenworth, Kansas, where commanders and staffs participated in refresher training experiences. As a lead up to this phase, General C and the Greybeards helped the commanders develop their training, their exercise training op objectives. The Greybeards were an integral piece of this training, reinforcing, grilling, and challenging the unit leaders on appropriate doctrine, techniques, tactics, and procedures. Those that received this training understood the difference between passive and very active learning. Phase two required the units to deploy to the field locations in their doctrinal command post to conduct five to seven days of intense 24-hour training fighting a free-thinking opposing force. This level of intensity and duration was needed to ensure leaders understood what General Cavazos called the evils of sleep deprivation. In many previous training events, leaders would often try to stay awake for the duration of the training, resulting in poor decision-making, and not developing or leveraging junior leaders. Key to General Cavazos' vision of intense, high-level training was harnessing the potential of emerging digital technology to develop intense computer simulation training opportunities that linked operational and tactical decision-making in real time. He designed a system that trained leaders to fight a world-class enemy and not fight the plan, which he knew would change when the first shot was fired. He loved to say the enemy has a vote. He was focused on developing and sustaining adaptable leaders. The third phase was an intense after-action review where detailed frank and often tough coaching was delivered by the senior mentors. At the end of the AERs, General C and the senior mentors coaching led to changes being programmed into the unit's future training plans. As the BCTP program developed and mature, General Cavazos trained a cadre of experienced active duty and retired officers to assist the Greybeards during training and help develop high-end computerized programs to make the training events feel real to the commands. He guided computer developers in creating high-resolution, realistic combat algorithms that closely simulated actual combat conditions. This attention to detail resulted in training experiences for senior commanders and staffs that closely mirrored actual combat conditions. The result was a computerized assisted training so realistic that the commanders and staff felt there were actual soldiers maneuvering in the field. The Army's BCTP program proved so successful 
that all the services now have developed their own BCTPs and a joint version evolved called the Joint Warfighting Fighting Program, complete with joint senior mentors. In 2011, the Battle Command Training Program was officially redesignated the U.S. Army Mission Command Training Program. But listen to me, regardless of what it's called, General Cavazos' legis legacy of intense training endures. I felt the Corps commander captured that extremely well. Now, General Cavazos taught us not to talk too long. He said it was hard on the soldiers in the rear ranks, thanks to the, his XO and S3 in combat, they've gotten a little retrieve. But I hope I passed his mustard to all. No mission too difficult, no sacrifice too great. Duty first, thank you, and I'll meet you on the high ground. Today's keynote speaker is the Honorable Gabe Camarillo, who was sworn in as the 35th Undersecretary of the Army on February 8, 2022. He serves as the Senior Civilian Assistant and Principal Advisor to the Secretary of the Army on matters related to the management and operation, as well as the Chief Management Officer of the Army. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in a warm round of applause for the Honorable Gabe Camarillo. Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to be here with everyone, and I'm really glad that the weather cooperated. Thanks to Lieutenant General Bernabe, our great host. Thanks to the incredible team here at Fort Cavazos who put this event together. Lieutenant General Retired House, your remarks were inspiring, and it was great speaking with you yesterday. Lieutenant Colonel Tucker, you're a legend too. Everybody here is your biggest fan but nobody more so than the soldiers on flag duty behind me. <laughs> it was great meeting you and all of the Cavasso family. I really want to take a moment first and also acknowledge the great support of the Colleen community, which continues to invest in the future success of this installation and provide such great support to our soldiers. And I'm also thrilled to be here today to speak directly to the family of this installation's new namesake. As we all know, the service of one requires the service of many. And those of you who are his children, grandchildren, nieces, nephews, all know the contributions that General Cavazos has made. We also want to acknowledge his wife, Caroline, who could not join us today, but we thank her as well for her incredible service. So we've all heard about the contributions of this legendary soldier. But what I want to speak about today is what its significance of this redesignation and that recognition to the Army. So what we want to do is shine a light on an individual, but also recognize his impact on an institution as we continue to lay the groundwork for an Army that continues to succeed. And I also want to point out that I myself, as a Texas native, grew up in El Paso of similar Mexican-American heritage who also understood what it's like to grow up in these communities and to be a part of them. So it's a real privilege for me to be a part of some, honoring somebody with such a similar background. Today's change is a fitting one. 
because in many ways, General Cavazos embodied what's always been great about the Army, which continues to evolve and transform, and it's always been enabled by the incredible talent of our soldiers. So as speakers before me have all noted, General Cavazos displayed his talent, his bravery, his valor and innovation multiple times in a highly decorated career. I won't list all the examples, but I would note that he was innovative from the very beginning, leading the Brinkineers, who many of whom were from Puerto Rican descent and only spoke Spanish, then Lieutenant Cavazos quickly earned their trust under, their command, under his command. Many of these brave soldiers gave their lives defending outpost Harry, which fell on the dividing line between Chinese-controlled territory and allied UN positions in Korea. During a battle for that outpost in June 14, 1953, Cavazos led his men to carry out repeated successful assaults on enemy positions. And even after or receiving orders to withdraw, Lieutenant Cavazos, already wounded himself, went back repeatedly to rescue missing men. Now, as I noted earlier, his heroism earned him the Distinguished Service Cross, as did similar actions in Vietnam. And they set this highly decorated soldier on a path to led him, that led him to become the first Mexican-American Army General Officer, and the first, ultimately, Hispanic-American to pin on four stars, designating the rank of general. That same path led General Cavazos, a sixth generation Texan, right here to Colleen, where he served as the three corps and then Fort Hood commander. And in many ways, he cemented his legacy here at this installation. Much like the bond between the Cavazos family and the great state of Texas, today his legacy lives on and continues to serve as a model for Army excellence. And although General Cavazos is certainly worthy of all the pomp and circumstances of this special day, his family made very clear to us that he would have never wanted this recognition. He knew that there were many other deserving heroes whose names will never adorn an Army base and who never made it home from Korea or Vietnam. But this, in many ways, was who General Cavazos was. Selfless, without condition, motivated by a deep love for his family, his soldiers, and his country. And those values live on in the great legacy of public service in the Cavazos family. To include his grandson, who we brought back here today for this very special occasion, Army Specialist Nicholas Cavazos. Will you please stand up? This young soldier traveled all the way from Germany to be with us today. Thank you very much. We appreciate your family's continued service to the Army. Nicholas and the entire Cavazos family remind us also, not just of General Cavazos' legacy, but the Army's continued drive to cultivate talent from wherever we can find it in all of the many communities across America. We thrive as an institution on the richness of the experience and talent and expertise that all of America has to offer. And throughout General Cavazos' long and storied career, the Army has continued to cast the widest possible net for leaders. We have the finest land force that the world has ever seen. And it's been made possible by relying on the talent that this nation has to offer harnessing contributions from every big city, every small town, and every sprawling cattle ranch like the one in Texas that General Cavazos grew up in. The same effort brings us here today, shining a light on legacy while also thinking critically about how the Army must transform and what lies ahead. And much of that happens here at this great installation. This installation, Fort Cavazos has become now synonymous with three corps, whose rich history starts in the forests of France during World War I 
and reaches forward through Operation Inherent Resolve and into the present day. Soldiers from here are critical to the Army's ongoing support to Ukraine in response to Russian aggression, and resources and talent from this installation have helped assure NATO allies that America stands ready to assist its partners in times of peace and peril. That would not be possible without the contributions of Third Corps and the many talented soldiers that train, live, and work at this installation. So as we honor the legacy of General Cavazos, we also honor the countless other brave individuals that have called this installation home. And we give thanks for the support that the Killeen community has provided to some of the nation's most important missions over many years. The bottom line, though, is that we're here because the best version of the United States Army is reflected in its most talented leaders, individuals like General Cavazos. So we are very pleased and very excited to honor the sacrifice and contribution of such a talented and incredible leader. So in closing, I also want to say that while we're naming this installation after one great legendary leader, we also do so in recognition of countless others who has made honorable sacrifices and many who will follow in General Cavazos' footsteps. To those aspiring leaders, people like General Cavazos helped make the Army what it is today. And it is your challenge to continue that legacy in his name. Thank you very much. Colonel Chad Foster, the Garrison Commander, and Command Sergeant Major Calvin Hall, the Garrison Command Sergeant Major, will execute the casing of the Fort Hood colors, colors, colors and the uncasing of the Fort Cavazos colors, colors, solidifying the redesignation of the installation. The practices and usage of military flags date back to the Revolutionary War and have evolved in the American military history ever since. The casing of the colors is a traditional ceremony held by the United States Army, commemorating a unit's lineage, its honors, and its identity. The colors represent all soldiers, past, present, and future, and the colors stand as a silent reminder of the past glories as well as an inspiration for future endeavors. The Garrison Command Team will now uncase the Fort Cavazos colors. This act symbolizes the installation's enduring commitment to the defense of our nation with a continued focus on training lethal mounted combat crews, staffs, and units, while also serving the surrounding communities. With this solemn act, we honor General Cavazos' bravery, sacrifice, and enduring contributions to our Army and our nation. Effective 9 May 2023, Fort Hood is redesignated as Fort Cavazos in accordance with Section 370 of the William M. Thornberry National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2021. Signed the Honorable Christine E. Warmer, Secretary of the Army. At this time, we would like to welcome Lieutenant General Bernardi, Command Sergeant Major Trooper Gore, and members of the Cavazos family to the podium to officiate the unveiling of the Fort Cavazos flag. So I'm going to ask Steve Cavazos to help me out here. He's going to come up to the microphone. And if everybody can look at the monitors, we should have a live shot of uh, one of our many gates. And so we're going to, on a count of five here, unveil 
the new signs there at the Bernie Bank gate. Please direct your attention to the two screens on the field, where you will witness the unveiling of the Fort Cavazos sign, located at the main entrance of the installation. Please join us as we count down from five for the unveiling. Here we go. Five, five four, four, three, two, two one. one. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Fort Cavazos, Texas, the home of the third honor war. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the third honor war song, followed by the army song. The words can be found on the back of the program. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. Please remain at your seats until the official party has exited. You are cordially invited to join us for a reception in the West Atrium as we celebrate this momentous occasion. Thank you all for attending the ceremony and a special thanks most of all to the Cavazzo family, Phantom Warriors, Phantom Lethal. Probably would ask you guys if, if you want to take a picture of the screen if you use that. We're gonna do a little.